I've been looking forward to tonight's guest for a while now. Her name is Lily Cornell Silver, and she has an Instagram TV show called Mind Wide Open. We've talked about it on Loudwire Nights on several occasions. It's a mental health focused interview series that posts every Monday. Welcome, Lily, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. So we're going to start like super, super basic because you can't assume everybody knows, right? So what is Instagram TV and what drew you to the platform? Sure. So Instagram TV is a facet of Instagram uh, that works for longer form stuff because I think on Instagram you can only post up to a minute, Um, but IGTV you can post up to an hour. My episodes are typically like 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, it's just it's just part of Instagram. So it shows up on Instagram, but it, it works for longer form. And, and I chose it because I think it has that tilt towards a younger audience. Yeah, makes sense. And speaking of young, you're only 20 years old, and yet you felt a calling to create this content. So what was your goal with this show for you? And what do you want others to take away from it? I mean, my goal was honestly, like, if I can help one person, five people, 10 people feel more validated and get any sort of information to help themselves in their own mental health. You know, that was, a, that was amazing. That was all I wanted. And I wanted to create some sort of centralized consolidated resource about mental health, especially right now. I came up with the idea while I was in quarantine because I was struggling to find resources that felt meaningful to me. And then, and then, you know, with the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement it felt really important to shed some more light on black mental health, intergenerational trauma, things like that. So yeah, so it it really like it was, you know, the circumstances were not great, but wanted to wanted to make the most out of them in in whatever way I could. Just curious, a little off topic, but are you going to go back to school like on campus? What what is your plan? No, I'm I'm actually in online school right now. My school's doing fully online for the semester. Okay. Okay. I was just curious if you were handling that. Do you feel like you found... Yeah, no, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, everyone's doing something different, so I yeah. totally get it. Do you feel like you've found your calling with this show? I feel like I've definitely found a calling. <laughs> you know, it's like like when when uh you know when you kind of set your foot on a path, and then all of a sudden like the path becomes very clear. Like that was that was kind of my experience with this. Like I was feeling, I mean, especially being you know having to leave school much earlier than intended in the semester because of COVID and. And I was feeling pretty lost and pretty confused and like not really sure, you know, what to do with my time, what to do with myself, like who am I outside of being a student? And then once I I made this decision, the pieces fell into place so beautifully. And so it definitely felt like, okay, like I'm, I'm on the right path and, and this is leading me somewhere amazing. So it's, it's been really, really beautiful in that sense. Those questions sound very familiar, by the way. And yeah, definitely the uh, happening so organically is is a sign, at least I believe in that. Yeah, totally. I I know from being an anxious person myself that having to interview others is nerve wracking. It depends on how well you know them, right? But you want to do right by the person. You want to have them walk away knowing you put some effort into this thing. So how do you prepare for an interview and how do you keep your anxiety at bay during these episodes? I mean, I definitely do all sorts of research beforehand. And if they have interviews, I watch interviews, write all my questions out. But honestly, like I, you know, I grew up in a situation where I was surrounded by adults all the time and surround, I mean, like, you know, being on tours and like, I was surrounded by so many different adults and that outside of school, like that's kind of who I was interacting with. So I feel like I gained those conversational skills pretty early on in life. And it it made it a lot easier to, you know, talk to anybody. Like I I feel comfortable talking to literally anybody. So I have my questions and I have my stuff prepared. But honestly, nine times out of 10, it ends up just being some sort of conversation because there's always other questions I want to ask and things that I want to dive deeper into. So um yeah, so I would say my training was definitely my my childhood. <laughs> yeah, and and speaking, touching on that a minute, uh, you launched the show on your father's day of birth. Growing up, did you have that mm-hmm. sense that you were a little different, right? Your mom's manager, your dad's a musician. I'm sure people were like extra super nice to you. Were you like, what's going on here? I mean, I think growing up in Seattle, like it's a little bit more common, you know, and it's not necessarily like, like, you know, mo- most people have ties somehow to like the music industry, a-, a lot of people that I grew up with anyway. So it never felt, you know, I never felt like I was like weird or anything, but I definitely had 
relatively unconventional childhood traveling a ton and and you know being around like you know the Alice in Chains guys taught me how to play poker when I was nine Mm. like that's probably not (laughs) like maybe not what I was supposed to be doing uh and instead of instead of allowance like I carried a swear jar around me on the tour bus like (laughs) that was my that was how I made my money um but it, it honestly like it it was so much fun and I learned so much from that experience and it taught me a lot about how to be kind of self-sufficient and you know be able to multitask and, and be in school and have my friends and also have these crazy adventures and yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't trade any second of it I yeah. wouldn't trade any second of it chores versus a swear jar you had life figured out young yeah very early on yeah. obviously I, I made a lot of money I will <laughs> The swear jar got canceled after like three days because it was like, okay, she's making too much money. She's like, a we need to be <laughs> um, As I was browsing your Instagram account, just kind of prepping for this, you know how it goes. Uh, you referenced Seattle on a number of occasions. What kind of connection do you feel to that city? I mean, this is where I grew up, born and raised. My family's from Seattle. Like, I mean, and I think, you know, obviously like the roots in my parents career run very deep in Seattle they're both born and raised in Seattle and I've just felt like such a you know such a support from the city uh and the people in it and and the more I travel and and now I'm at school in LA like the more time I spend away from Seattle the more I'm like wow I I appreciate growing up here so much and honestly like my my friends and peers and I like we have this conversation all the time like god Seattle is so good like no matter where we (laughs) No matter where we go, no matter where we end up, like we all we all kind of want to end up back in in Seattle. So yeah, it is a very amazing place, and the the roots definitely run very deep here. It is an amazing place. I have no roots, but I have visited, and it it is quite lovely. Has doing Mind Wide Open changed your perspective on any topic that you've gotten into with guests? Like, if not changed your perspective full on, has it made you look at any of the issues you've discussed differently? For sure, I think. I mean, honestly, for me, like I've gained so much information doing this series and and uh, my next episode coming out is with a suicide researcher um, and clinical psychiatrist. And I have struggled a lot with with suicidal ideation in my life. And even though, you know, I have resources and, and I'm lucky enough to have like a therapist and a psychiatrist and, you know, whoever I need to talk to about it, I can talk to you about it. it it's still something that I think is so widely misunderstood and so to be able to hear her be like most people you know experience that at some point in their life and like here's the science behind it and here are clinically researched tools that you can use to combat it or to cope like things like that I think are so fascinating I love I love getting tools and I also love hearing from mental health experts like the science behind it because it can make you feel a little bit less a little bit less crazy (laughs) when you know exactly like like what you know what the science is and what your brain chemicals are doing and and you know how your neurotransmitters are firing I was surprised to see your latest episode on gaslighting. For whatever reason, when I think of mental health, I just don't think of gaslighting, but maybe I should. Right, 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 right. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I was honestly kind of in the same boat as you. Uh, When the opportunity came to me, I was like, that's super fascinating, but like, not, I know it's definitely, it's very relevant to my own life, but not sure how it fit in. Mm -hmm. Um, But then after talking to Dr. Stern, I realized how much of an impact it has had on my own mental health, you know, and, and the way that I, even just in the way that I go about thinking about my own mental health, like there's definitely been times where I've been gaslit into like feeling like, oh, you know, my mental health struggles aren't valid. My mental health struggles mm. aren't real. And I think to an extent, most people that struggle with mental health experience that, whether it's societally being told like you need to be more high functioning or whether it's people in their life being told like just smile just go outside you know that kind of stuff um so after talking to her I was like oh my god this is incredibly relevant you know to mental health so I think it's yeah it was it was cool it was cool to delve into that for sure no I thought so too it just it was unexpected which is was even kind of refreshing oh I didn't expect to find this here okay let's let's learn more um what would you say is the biggest mental health issue young adults your age uh face and what can less younger adults such as myself do to help I'm not sure if I could you know quantify it in like one thing that young adults struggle with something that I've been seeing amongst my own peers uh lately is just kind of like the crushing weight of the world (laughs) (laughs) which is 
so small thing, but I guess that's how I would describe it. You know what I mean? Especially with the election coming up and, um, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot, like with climate change, like we're kind of at that point now where if we don't do something, it's going to be irreversible. And, you know, with all of the like structural supremacy, making itself very known and police brutality, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, you know, and struggling with mental health issues outside of that. Like it can just feel like very, you know, very difficult to, to keep moving through. So I would say it's, it's that balance between like trying to take care of yourself while the world also seems like it's kind of crumbling, you know. But I don't know why that was funny, the crushing weight of the world, and yet we... Just, I know, I'm like, oh, you did nothing, <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> break into laughter, like it's funny on any level, but we did the same exact thing. So. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's ridiculous, at least, yeah. yeah. Um, most people would go their entire career in media, trust me, wishing to have guests like Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam, which you recently had on. What do you think of like, kind of like the privilege and the platform that comes with a last name like Cornell and the responsibility as well? Definitely. I mean, this is something, so Ed's, uh, oldest daughter, Olivia, his daughters are like my sister's best friends, but she has this show called I'm Listening, or oh my God, sorry, not I'm Listening, called Let's Talk. I'm I just did a different show called I'm Listening. Um, but it's called Let's Talk. And her and I have talked about this a lot. Like, we are born with, you know, a platform handed to us on a silver platter. And it's like, how are we going to use that? You know? And we both have talked about how we just feel kind of like a moral obligation to, like, how can I just sit here with this platform and use it to, like, post bikini pics? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this, like we, we have to use this to, like, spread some sort of awareness or, or share uh sharing in our knowledge and and this series for me was definitely like I have so much access to people that have helped me so much with my mental health and you know looking around and seeing kind of the state of uh what mental health looks like now especially in our country um resources and and access resources is so 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 limited so I wanted to create some sort of platform where you know completely free completely accessible runs across multiple platforms where I can have, you know, high profile people like Ed or Duff and then have, um, you know, mental health professionals like Laura Lipsky and Dr. Mark Brackett uh, be able to share the information and, and share their wealth of knowledge in a way that allows anybody to access it. What is Lily Cornell Silver, and we'll wrap on this, wish to see in her life in the next 10 years? I saw some videos of you singing and you can play some instruments and you've got this show. Like, what is you down the road 10 years from now look like? Sure. Um, as someone with anxiety, I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> because that would, that's like my number one worry all the time yeah. is like, what's going to happen? Um, but honestly, like if I can, if I can continue to be doing something helpful in the mental health realm, that would be amazing. Music, as you said, has always been a passion of mine. Um, you know, and, and I write a lot and have released a couple things with friends, but um, you know, some I, I would love to explore more the intersection between music and mental health. And there are a lot of artists that I think do a really good job of that. So, you know, and I'm studying media studies and psychology in school. So that, you know, that's relevant. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I think there's a, there's a number of ways it could go. <laughs> we'll definitely keep our eye on Lily Cornell Silver. One final reminder, Mind Wide Open is a weekly but half an hour talk show focused on mental health that posts on IGTV every Monday. Thank you so much, Lily. Feel free to pop on whenever you have some news. You have a home here with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.